Healthy sexuality in the home. Healthy sexuality in the home. And I pray you really listen to this. Because I didn't say healthy sex in marriage. But I go beyond that to say healthy sexuality in the home. The Lord will bless our understanding and help us to be healthily, sexually, in the name of Jesus. Let's start reading our Bible. This time I want to read some foundational scriptural passages. Genesis chapter 2, verse number 25. Genesis chapter 2, verse number 25. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. They were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Look at Genesis chapter 4, verse number 1. Genesis chapter 4, verse number 1. And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived. And Bea came and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. That is the actual, actual scripture that first record sex in the Bible. But look at the name, the Bible called it And Adam knew his wife He knew him In other words, Adam and Eve had sex together Because that is the reproductive system That God has created Adam knew his wife And he bear his son Also look at Proverbs chapter chapter. Okay, before you get to Proverbs That Genesis Allow us to read Genesis chapter Is it chapter 16? There is something in chapter 16 also. Genesis chapter 16 verse number 4. Okay, from verse 3. And Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian. After Abraham had, had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and she gave her to her husband Abraham to be his wife. Look at verse 4. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. That's Bible language. He went in. Unto Ega. He went in unto Ega. You know, the way I love to say it is this the Bible is not silent about sex. There are passages of scripture that talks about sex, and these are some of the passages. But the only thing is that the Bible did not describe sex in a graphic way, just described it in coded languages, in a dignified way. The Bible is not lurid. The Bible is not vulgar when it comes to the description of sex. But to say that the Bible doesn't talk about sex means you are ignorant. And Adam, I mean Abraham, went in unto her. Yes, he went in unto her. That is expressive enough to show you that that's a sexual encounter between Abraham and the maid. Also, you can read Proverbs. Is it verse 15? Yeah, Proverbs chapter 5. Yes, from verse 15. Drink waters out of thy own cistern and running waters out of thy own well. If you want to understand, that is description of sex in Bible terms, in Bible language. Drink waters out of your own well. That's talking to a husband and to the wife. How do you understand that? Look at the next verses. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of waters in the streets. Let them be only thy own and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Look at verse 19. Let her be as a loving him and pleasant role. Let her breast Satisfy thee at all times and be thou ravish always with our love. Look at those languages. Dignified but describing sex between a couple in, uh, in biblically. Now I'm showing you all those biblical passages for you to know that when we talk about sex, we are not being vulgar. We are not out of contents. It's still scriptural. And the Lord wants us to talk about it. And we can't do a marriage conference or talk about homes of leaders and we won't address the issue of sex. We must address it, but in a dignified way. 
You know, one of the great problems and challenges we have today that in the church, leaders keep quiet about this issue. We don't talk with the truth of the scripture in a dignified way, in an understandable way, in a, in a wonderful way, but in a clear, definite way for us to know what is happening. And that's why we have a lot of problems in our churches. I know of churches where people are just giving back. Even people that are poor, they have no means of feeding those children. You see them, they are giving back. See, seven, eight, nine, ten. Because why? Leadership have not told them how to do family planning and how to manage the issue of sex in our homes and in our marriages. So we are going to look at them, but I'm first showing them to you so that you know that they are all scriptural. They are there in the scripture, and there's no way we'll talk about marriage that won't talk about the issue of sex. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now, if you say that is Old Testament, let's come to New Testament. First Corinthians chapter 7. First Corinthians chapter number 7. I'll be reading from verse 1 to verse 5. Of course, we all know those passages. Just want to remind ourselves. Now, concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. It's good for a man not to sleep with any woman or any man that he or she finds. It's, it is good. It is scriptural that a man and a woman that are not married should not be having sex together. The Corinthians ask a question and they wrote those questions to Apostle Paul. So this is the answer of Apostle Paul to the Christians of those days and which is still relevant to our time also. It is good that when a man and a woman that are not married, they should not have sex. That's what it means that it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Look at verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Because when a man that is not married touches a woman sexually, eh, that she's, he or she is not married to, is fornication. So verse 2 explains that to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own words. Husband. From verse 3. And let the husband render down to the wife due benevolence. What does that mean? As a husband, be responsible by sexually alive to your wife. She will do she refun. Let the husband render down to the wife due what? Benevolence. Don't say I'm tired. I'm fasting. I'm praying. I will get there. I will tell you about sexual problems that we have found out today. Then, and likewise also the wife unto the world. Unto the husband. You must be alive. One sister wants to marry. And she was asking me, Essa, Essa, so they will touch this my body. I say, well, well. I say, if you don't want anybody to sleep with you, stay in your father's house. But you marry, as the Lord live Lale Oje! It must happen. He said, ah! I said, what is ah there? Don't cry, Holy Ghost here. Number four, verse four. The wife, had not power over her own body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband, had not power over his own body, but the wife. Verse five. Defraud ye not one another. Don't use sex to punish one another. Except it be with consent. Except you agree for a for what? A time. He says a time, not long time, oh. A time that ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer by mutual consent. Not that the wife says, I'm going to fast, and you don't seek permission from the husband, and you are fasting, and he says, I want to test your body, and you say, No, you are fasting. That fasting is no more acceptable. One woman told me that I said I'm fasting. And my husband says he wants to touch me. I said, What are you doing? And she said, No, I'm fasting. I said, Break that fast. Oh, I'm going to break here. I said, Did you get permission from him before you start fasting? She said, No. I said, Break that fast. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I break that fast. This night. Oh, yeah? You say, Hey, Pastor. I say, Yes. And I say, It's not that you get there and you tie face so. When you don't look at that, I will shut you again. Because I know the husband. The husband is the kind of man, the moment he has a wife for sex and the wife is not giving, he pack up. If he's going, if you greet him, he won't answer. 
you will stop buying food in the house. You will stop keep, you start keeping late nights. I said, is that what you want? Open the gate, my friend. And when she did that for some couple of time, the husband bought a car, bought everything for her. I said, there you are. Won't you feel digba? Look, don't, don't provoke me. Just allow me to be doing the child of God issue that I've been doing. If you provoke me. <laughs> okay. You are blessed. Except with mutual consent, so that you come together, so that Satan did not tempt you for your incontinency. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now, according to research, there are three major things that destroy marriages. Number one is sex. Number two is money. Hello? Number three is irreconcilable differences. If you can conquer those first two, then your marriage will succeed. Most marriages today is, that have been destroyed, you check the papers and you go to customary courts. It's, it's the issue of sex. It's either the man wants it too much, and the woman doesn't want it. Or is that the woman complain of not enough sex or more sex or that the man is doing extramarital affairs? It's always the issue of sex. So let's study it very well. I've given you the biblical foundation. Let me quickly run through the, uh, the, 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 fund the basics. And let me go to the advance for you. Sex is a union of the body of the man and woman involving the reproductive organs. There are, there are, there are, there are romances, there are petting, there are pecking, there are other things associated with it, but that is the main one. It is the penetration of the female organ by the male organ, otherwise referred to as what? Intercourse. The scripture calls it several names, like we have seen, such as knowing her, went in unto her, Uncover her nakedness and touching her. Look at the next sentence and mark it very well. It is a divine invention. Sex is not created by Satan. It is created by God. It's God's idea. It's not satanic or demonic idea. Hello? Because even before the temptation, before the fall of man, they have been naked. And I've read that to you in Genesis 2.25. So it's not a human or divine, I mean, or demonic invention. It's a divine invention. God was the one who created it. He's our creator. He's the one who molds our body. Every organ of our body. He's the one who molded it the way he has molded it. So you can't say, mm, I don't want to know anything about that. And you see, I'm averse to that. You are denying your creator and you are denying your humanity. Hello? It is a divine invention. What's the purpose? It is designed by the Creator to be experienced, practiced, and enjoyed within the boundaries of marriage only. Please underline that one seven times. Within what? The boundaries of marriage only. Sex within marriage is good, is edifying, is godly, is enjoyable. It's nine heaven. But outside marriage, God will judge it. It was not created by the devil, but God, I've said that. Every living thing has what? Sexuality. The animals, the butterflies, the cockroaches, they all have sexuality. It's a reproductive system that God has created in the body, even in animals and in every living thing. There is natural hunger for it. In humans, you see, every man has sexuality, has sexual passion and desire and libido. Also, women, you have sexual passion, you have desires, you have libido. All of us have it in varying degrees and varying levels. It is the chief reason for marriage. At least we read it from the Bible. It's one of the reasons for marriage. 
uh, procreation and uh, whatever. Yes, but it can't happen without sex. It's one of the reasons for marriage. So if you have inhibition, if you have myths, if you have all this laid back attitude and you don't love sex, you don't have interest in it, you don't want it, then don't marry. Because if you marry, there's going to be trouble. It is good, holy, pure, and lovely within marriage. It is the avenue for bonding, not body. Bonding, B O N. Bonding. It's the avenue for bonding and love among couples. When you see couples that are always smiling, always loving, always holding each other, the area of sex is going on very well. It is the avenue of making babies and pregnancy. That's one of the outcomes. Or oh, that's the shiva and major outcome. Making babies and having pregnancy. You want to have pregnant, you want to have babies, and yet there's no sex. Well, the Europeans are doing that. They call it uh, artificial insemination. It is both natural, normal, and spiritual. Sex is normal. Sex is normal. Sex is natural. Sex is also what? Spiritual. It is a medium of transfer, either of blessings or causes. The spiritual being, I want you to note that, the spiritual being is also what? A sexual being. And the sexual being can be what? Oh, a spiritual being. Within marriage, sex should not make us feel guilty. Should not make us feel guilty. The fact that you are spirit filled and you are anointed and you have the anointing of God, the power of God in your life does not diminish your sexuality. That's one truth we have not accepted. We feel that every man of God, every woman of God, mm, there's nothing. He, that, he has no sexual feeling. So if you don't conquer, if you don't master your sexuality, and you get into pastoring and ministry, you fall, Yakata. Because you see, pastoring, ministry, standing before people, leading people, gives you privileges, gives you platform to several men, to several women. You are respected. You are honored. What women will not tell their father and mother, they will tell you. So if you don't master your spirit, sexuality, you take advantage. I hope I'm talking to somebody. So don't deny it. I don't like it. I don't want to hear it. You are denying it. Don't deny it. A spiritual being is a sexual being. The fact that we are born again does not remove our sexuality. The Father, I'm spirit filled. I'm anointed. I have the power of God in my life. Does not mean you don't have feelings in your body. You have it. In fact, that's the time when you are canceling people. Oh! You see people that wake up your sexuality. There are people you look at one on one and you have a tingly sensation. You have to be saying, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Have you two seen people? That's why, you see, there are a lot of Christian teachings that wants to protect us from this. But which ignorant people, they, they fight against. For example, they will teach you that a man should not be carrying woman on Okada. I don't know if they still teach you that kind of teaching. Because you can see people carrying Okada. One Okada man was t- testifying. He said he loves to carry those ladies. That he would deliberately slam his brake, huh? and those one will hit him, bah, and he was enjoying. He said he was even wetting his pants. If me, I didn't know Okada, I know of Molue. I was in Molue in those days when Molue was in Lagos. You remember? They say in church, they say, "Day water by day, how to pet that day." When you climb Molue, you hold it. The one fella sang 99 sitting 49 standing. Have you? Hey, hey, I was in Mo we were going from Yaba to Yibo. Suddenly, this lady was saying, What's your problem? Ah, the man said, I didn't do anything. They started fighting. When we look at the man, the trouser was standing <laughs> inside Mo And the lady was complaining, Ah, you have been hitting me all this while. Just standing behind her. A spiritual being is a sexual being. If a spiritual being is no more a sexual being, 
there are all these adultery, fornication, and men of God, women of God falling into sin. We won't be hearing it. Because, you know, I'm trying to say this to you so that you stop denying your sexuality. Because as long as you deny it, you will fall into it. You won't be able to take the necessary precautions. Hello? Now let's go to sex within marriage. I just want to give you advices and give you scriptural teachings on that. Sex within marriage. Number one, provide adequate environment that ensures privacy before sexual what? Acts. Husband and wife must sleep together. And when you want to do that, let it be in a room. Like the Lord to say, they say it takes two to tango. Three is what? Three is a crowd. Provide a safe environment. You know, I'm talking of healthy sexuality in the home. I'm coming to say some few things there. Provide a safe environment. Don't have sex before your children. And don't be loosed and burnt up in your passion. That you can have it everywhere. And people are watching you. No, it's a private affair. Don't, talk, don't turn it to public placement. Couples must cl be clean and free from body odor. If your husband is complaining, go and walk on your body odor. Go and get perfume and take your bath. It's very important, sister. Yes, I know you know. Sex must be enjoyed proportionately by both. We must adjust to each other sexually. You know what I've discovered? Husband and wives, they have different sexual... Hmm? Urge. Either by creation or by your past experiences. You know a wife... Okay, let me paint a scenario for you. Supposing there's a sister who has... Uh, when she was not born again, she has moved around, moved around. Tasted so many men, men of different sizes and different techniques and styles, sexually speaking. And now, two years ago, she got saved, soundly saved. So she was transformed, she's changed, her soul is born again. She's a child of God, but her body is there. So she doesn't practice her lottery again. She's sound, good child of God, filled with the Holy Spirit. Then, two years down the line, uh, a brother in church says, The Lord says, I should marry you. And they got into courtship. And uh, you know, in Christian marriage, there's nothing like premarital sex. But that brother happens to be a virgin. He has not seen a full woman before. He has never tasted it before. Now, if there's no marriage counseling, they're going to have a problem when they marry. Because by the time they will marry, the brother even doesn't know the way. It is the woman that will teach him. And he won't know any different style. Only the missionary style. I think I'm talking to adults. And there will be a problem. The lady will be complaining silently. So they have different, different urges. And which we need to study. And sit down and talk about it. Number three. I mean number four. Don't deny or refuse each other. Let's see least to what? Infidelity. I've told you several, several stories about that. When you use sex as a weapon, you are sending the man out. And unfortunately, even in some cases, you are sending the woman out. The husband must not pervert or abuse his wife sexually. If you are a husband, don't practice oral sex. Stop practicing perversion because there are a lot of sexual perversions today. Some variants, some innovations that is not scriptural, that is not godly, that a lot of people are trying to pass through our throats. And unfortunately, some so-called pastors, which are priests of Aaron, who are Aaron in ministry, you know, people, Aaron that led people to do uh, uh, serve idol worship, they are telling us that masturbation is, uh, it has nothing to do with our spirit. It has a lot to do. It's a perversion of sex. It's a variant of sex. It's an innovation of sex, which is against the will of the law. That is one of the things that people of Sodom did, and God destroyed them. May not destroy you. Number, the next one. The wife should not set or give conditions for sex. Don't say, that money I ask you, if you don't give it to me, I won't allow you. You have become a prostitute. 
Once you marry, he should have free access to you. Accept yourself. Eh, eh, I don't want to open up because my husband would think I'm a prostitute. Ah, what's your problem? Open up. In actual fact, you should chase your husband. What do I say you should do? Chase him. Around three in the afternoon, call his line. Where are you, dear? He said, I'm at work. Ah, please don't use all your strength to work. Oh. There is strength for there's work for you to do at home. Oh. And, eh? Yes, no. I'm telling you that there's a work for you. Quit work, Abby. What's your problem? I bet don't use all your strength. Oh. Me, I they want you. Oh. When you come back home, you have to do a real work. Oh my close to go Mary. You close by four. Does that say you are not filled with the spirit? You are filled with the spirit. Does that remove your salvation? No. It have, in fact, it increases your reward in heaven. Who is clapping? May the blood of Jesus wash your heart. Don't give conditions. Tell him whatever you want is here. That's how you can keep his eyes back home. Okay, I read of a book. I read a book many years back. I still remember the name of the lady. It was written by a lady, Marabe Morgan. Marabe Morgan. Total woman. She told the story of she got married and she thought her marriage is going to succeed. Say, but two months into the marriage, the marriage was crashing because she didn't know all these things. So she started searching, asking questions, traveling here and there. Please save my marriage. Please save my marriage. What can I do? It's in the course of asking questions that she got to know many things. One of the major things she knew is sex. In fact, that's the illustration I just gave to you now. She was the one who did it. The day she got that, ah, because the husband will always want her. She'll say, no, ah, is it food? You did one yesterday. God, don't kill me, oh. Then she discovered that she can be chasing the husband. Then she said, one day she put a call through to the office. How are you, love? That one was surprised. You have never called me at work. Yes, there's always a first time. I just want to tell you that by the time you return in the evening, I will have made your best food for you. I'll be in my nightgown, see through, and get ready. Don't finish all your strength there, because you are going to walk from this evening to tomorrow morning. He said, the husband said, stop talking nonsense. He said, no, I need to say this to my husband. He said, before two hours, the husband was at the door. And she decided to open the door in see-through gown. She told the story there. That the moment the husband saw her and said, Wow! He didn't know where he threw his briefcase. Wow! Oh, <laughs> See, all after that encounter, all that she has wanted to say, the husband doesn't have time to listen. Now he said, uh, Say it, I'm listening. And that's what revived the marriage back. She put it in a book. If you can get the book, I'm talking of a book about 30 years ago, Marabe Morgan. Total woman. She talked about cooking. She talked about submission. She talked about all those things we've been talking about. You can even do a roaster. There's no problem about that. Somebody was asking me on the live television that Essa, Essa, supposing the thing cash me on the day that it's not our roaster, Moni Jesu Oluawa. Are you not the one that made the roaster? You can adjust. The Sabbath is made for man. It's not man that is made for the Sabbath. We can change it. And I remember we were at Sheraton Hotel. I was saying something about this in a couple seminar there. Then we got to one point. Somebody asked a question. Excuse me, sir. If I feel like it, how do I say it to my husband? Because according to African tradition, you don't say it. I say that's not Bible tradition. Bible tradition, you can say it. I can show you a scripture, but I won't show you. You yourself, go and do your research. Okay, before I could answer very well, one medical doctor said, Please, sir, let me chip in something. Oh, I said, oh, yeah, doctor. Do you know what he said? He said, when he married, and he looked at the wife. He said, when we married, 
apparently he was trying to get a approval. He looked at the wife. So he said, okay, when we marry, I told my wife, if you need it, tell me. If I need it, I tell you. And the wife said, how? Say both of them decided to give it a name. And we all said, what's the name? He said, what's that drug you use when you sleep? Valium. Ah, uh-uh. We said Valium. He said, yes. He said, because as a medical doctor, I know the power of Valium. Now, when you use Valium, you sleep. What's so for fun? What's so for fun? And that this one also works like Valium. So he said, sometimes he comes back from work. So tired, and he was trying to say, look today, the people they brought to the hospital, had to walk and walk and walk, and the woman would say, we thank God though, I hope you are okay, sir, because tonight, you will use your valium. <laughs> ah, valium! <laughs> he said some other time, it is him that would say, oh dear, I feel like using my valium before I sleep today. He said one day, they, he and the wife were even talking, and the children were there, and the children would say, mommy, go and use your valium. That's what makes life go around. Mommy, unknown to them. So you can give it a name. And when we give it a name, we agree. That name is known to both of us. And call it different names. It's part of what makes the couple tick. What makes marriage is tick. You see, those, but those are things we have denied ourselves for a long time. Under the guise of spirituality. Avoid mocking or blaming each other for any sexual inabilities. Go for marriage counselors to help you out if you are having challenges there. Consider the years of intensive self-desires in men from 22 years to 39, 40, 42, and 45. And in women from 35, I change it to 35 to 60 years. Let me explain. And that will help us a lot. And you know because we are leaders, listen to my explanation. And I put some of them in this book. A man is a sexual predator. That is when he's young. From around 18, a young boy will start having sexual pressure. In actual fact, boys that remain unmarried until 25, 26, they will be bedwetting. That's one of the ways God used to release their sexual tension. That's why I always tell young men, you must marry at 25 or 26. Because the sexual pressure, if he's a healthy man, will be so strong. But you know what? It will continue until he's around 40, 42, 45. When a man is nearing 50 or over 50, his sexual desires are on the way down. By then, except, this is the only exception, except he's drinking dubonet, wine, beer, and all this cocaine and all those things. Those ones are stimulants. It work over the system. That's why we can go two, three, four, five rounds. But if he's a good Christian, a true child of God that doesn't drink stimulants, by the time he's 45, that pressure is going. He can only do maybe once or twice a week. Even sometimes two weeks, three weeks, sometimes four weeks. It's okay. Quite unlike before. That's a man. But you know the reverse is for a woman. A woman will be having some sexual feelings in her late teens and her early twenties, but not so strong like a man. A woman will not have strong sexual feeling until she's around 35. From 35 to 60, she's on fire. The Bible is correct. That's why the Bible says a widow must remarry until she's what? 60. And go and check it up. These are the women that do a lot of evil. And let me bring something to it. That's why when you are going to marry, your age must not be too far from each other. Did you hear me? Your age must not what? When a man is 20, 25 years older than the wife, you're asking for trouble. Because by the time you are around 60, you are going to be experiencing what they call erectile dysfunction. And by that time when your wife is alive, she's coming up. She's coming up, sexually speaking. She might not talk, oh. 
but she's on fire. Or maybe I should give you a, a practical description. When it comes to sexual feelings, the body of a man is like a paper that you crumbled and you light it. How many minutes will it burn? Huh? In two, three seconds, it has died. But the body of a woman is like a log of wood. It will take time to light it. But once it's lighting, how many, how many baskets of water will you need to quench it? A lot. Even when the fire has died, the, the, the embers will be doing shh. Jesus. So you must call. You know that's the problem our Igbo, Igbo, Igbo guys are having. Our Igbo people. You know, somebody will be 40, marrying a girl of 20. Somebody will be 38, marrying a girl of 18. Initially, they won't have a problem. But by the time the man is getting old, the girl, the, the wife, is just. That's why you see a lot of immorality going on. And you know, most women, by that time, they've got to the age of, uh, uh, what do you call it? Menopause. And they want to enjoy themselves. So the fear of sex is no more there. They want to enjoy it. That's why they look for young men. Young men. Young men. Young men. Use this as a counseling for others. Because it's a reality. It's a reality. Now, if you're different, if you're, if your sexual urges are different, sit down together and we adjust. Like a lady came to a geo. Esa, want your son. Want your son? Hey, what did he do? You know they do me that thing where, where? I mean, I like that to you. Now you say, make I give my life to Jesus so and I give him to him. If not be so, ah, you know me, oh, I give him two weeks. If you don't do that thing where, I they go out to Ah, need your mother, daddy. Don't go. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. All I'm telling you is what you will never hear in the pulpit. But it's a reality. That's why a pastor, a leader, you must know things so that when your people come, you know what to tell them. Everything is not faith. Everything is not Bible. And sister, go and be disciplined. Sister, ask, let us serve the Lord. Any help me? And here, oh, Pami, they'll be serving the Lord physically, but bodily they'll be serving Satan. So the G.O. called the husband. Mm-hmm. Your wife said, ah, only sir. How now? He says, I am an iron bender. From morning till evening, I will have been beating iron. <laughs> By the time I will get home, I can't beat anything again. <laughs> ah, G.O., why are you bad at you? <laughs> And he taught him what to do, which I can't teach you here. No, if you, uh, if you need counseling, come and pay and receive counseling in that area. He taught him what to do, and it's not sinful anyway, but I can't make it public here. He taught him what to do, and he said, sit down with your wife, adjust to each other. If she says she wants it four times, let her come to three times. You two come up to two times. At least, if you do this thing, I just help yourself. You can do a good work. And two weeks later, the Jew saw the woman in church. Ah, sister, come on. How about that? Yeah, daddy, your ministry will not crash. <laughs> now, let's go to sexual challenges. Sexual challenges in marriage. Today, there are many couples that are grappling with various sexual challenges, but which are largely unreported and unacknowledged. From our research, we have discovered the following. Look at this. Sexual anxiety. What does that mean? A husband that is a eunuch, or low performance, or low spam count. And there are many husbands like that. There are many husbands like that. Sexual anxiety is either a eunuch, he might not be a eunuch when they marry, but after they marry, he became a eunuch. You will, you will need prayer, a lot of warfare 
like the one God will help us to do this afternoon, the one we started since yesterday. Yeah, we need a lot of warfare. Because if, if your husband contact this sexual problem, it's a big challenge. Big, big one. He's not a eunuch before you marry. But after you marry, he became a eunuch. He can't perform. Or his low span count. He can and a low span count. According to medical science, the span count should be about 20, is it 20 millimeter? That's the one that can really father and fertilize the egg of a woman. But when it is around 50, 18, it's still manageable. But when it is less than 10, it's big trouble. Big trouble. So, and it happens to people. They will not say it, oh, but it happens. It happens. And not only men, it also happens to women. Like I was teaching this, something like this in a class one day, to our doctoral class. One geo stood up later and said, Sir, huh? I wish I've known these things and taught my people many years ago. Then he told the story of a particular couple that wedded in their church and for 15 years there's no issue. And they didn't say anything. They were just coming to church and going. They just discovered that this couple doesn't have a child. He said, until one day, call the husband. What was the problem? The husband confessed that his wife has no passage under that for these 15 years have not been able to penetrate her. And you people kept quiet. There are many issues like that that you can't hear on the altar. That's why our counseling ministry, very important. That's why this kind of marriage seminars, you do it in your church, very important. Where we say things in a practical but dignified way. People are having problems. Sexual anxiety. The husband just suddenly found out his manhood is gone. And the wife, they pass it close up. Oh, let me say this to you, without sounding vulgar, please. A woman has three passages under. Even most women don't know that. There's a sexual passage. There's a urine passage. There's the excreta passage. So, the sexual passage and where the baby comes out can get blocked. Why the urine has the excreta is there. You think she's a woman, but she's not. She's not complete. It's like what the Bible says in the book of Exodus, our young sister that have no breast. Kilo five fish is soji. Now another sexual problem. Addiction. Addiction. Some people have pornography addiction. They are addicted to sex. They can practice sexual perversion. Anna sex. Oral sex. That's why it's that for anal sex. They really drew it through the anus. Oral sex. Man will put his mouth under his wife, under a woman. People do that. And they feel, eh, well, that's what will wake me up. That's what will make me to be allowed. They are all perversion. And they are husbands that are forcing their wife to do that. It's another sexual problem. And you see, when you are watching pornography, on television, on your internet. Okay, they don't even show pornography on television. It's on the internet today. There are sites you go to. And you see these days that everybody's having iPad. iPad, iPad. Hey, hey. Okay, oh. If you don't guard yourself, they will just pop up. There are sites that will just pop up and show in the breast. There are sites how to disvagin again. It's on the internet. If you go there, plain sex. Especially from Eastern Europe. All those, uh, all those, uh, Bulgaria, Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, all those Serbia, all those, up to Ukraine, everything, up to Russia. That's their lifestyle. And they're on the net. And some people buy it and be watching. You need to put guards in your computer or else. You'll be watching. And when your mind is polluted, your marriage will be polluted. Number three, rape and incest is another sexual problem. Forcefully having sex with your spouse or your maids and children. There are men who do that. There are men who rape their wives. There are wives who rape their husbands. Let me even go further. There are children that rape each other. Hyperactive. That's another one. The man is everyday sex. He has a very high libido. He wants to finish the wife. 
It's another sexual problem. And that one arises out of lust. Yes, sir. Frigidity. This one is for women. Frigidity. Negative views. And low desire for sex. And you know, frigidity comes either because of your past teachings you were taught. There are a lot of young women that have been taught in the past that lose sex. You endure it. You don't enjoy it. It's only for making babies. And once you are pregnant, close your door. And when your husband is uh, doing it, just be frowning. It's nothing to be enjoyed, though. Because if you enjoy, you are carnal. You see, that one will lead to frigidity. Then if you have been raped before, if you have been sexually molested in the past, it will lead to frigidity. There are people like that. When they are to marry, we should cancel them. Because that picture of rape will keep coming back to their mind. And it will affect their sexuality. That their husbands will start having problems. Women like that, they need a lot of care. They need a lot of teaching. A lot of uh, disabusing their mind. That not every man is a beast. These are sexual challenges. But you will not hear of it from the pulpit. People will not walk up to you and say, I have this challenge. But it's there. And which we ought to know. You may ask me. You may be wondering, oh, how did Aki John get to know all this? It's my job. If I went to register for a course called Sexual Wholesomeness, it was there I learned all this. And I said, because I know I'm going to be talking to pastors, I'm going to be talking to leaders that will take it and pass it across to others. So we need to learn as much as possible. Once you are a leader, you have people under you, two, three, four, five, six, who look up to you for counseling or advice. You need these things. Oh, people that are close to me, we work together. They know I will not keep quiet. Sometimes when they greet me in the morning, I say, when last did you sleep with your wife? They are no more surprised. They know I'm interested. I say, when last? He says, I, I say, don't sigh it. Close your alley today and go and do your duty. Walk over me. I ask people. Even ladies walking with me, I say, hey, who chased you last? Oh? Who chased you last? Oh? Jama, oh? It's just like that. You don't keep, because if you don't ask people, they will keep quiet. And yeah, fire will be burning. And before, they, before you know it, they start misbehaving. So as a, as a leader in the church, don't wait until your people come for counseling. Even make it a Sunday sermon. You will see the response. And talk about your own weaknesses also. You are not downgrading. You are just telling them, I'm a, I'm a woman. All my stories I'm telling you, I'm just telling you I'm a woman like you. But God has given us grace. And with the proper knowledge God exposed us to, we have overcome it. That's why I'm sharing with you. Let's move on. These sexual challenges among couples have often been wrongly handled, which in turn have led to unwholesome sexuality in the home. Now look at all these places I want to share with you and note them very well. In lots of homes, unhealthy sexuality, such as pornographic materials, do you see keep them at home? Under your bed. One of these days, your teenagers will, will remove your bed when you are not around. And they will see what daddy has been watching. Sex before the children. You know, some of us are so born up in our laws. We even have sex before our children. Ah, they are small boys. They are small girls. They don't understand. They understand though. One day, a six-year-old boy call a, a four-year-old girl. Say, lie down and open your leg. I said, what do you want to do? He said, I want to do to you the way daddy used to do to mommy. How about that? Let's move on. Children sleeping with each other, especially during this holiday time. Children of your, your niece, they come around, 13, 14 year old, and they come to your boy, who is about uh, 9, 10. They will force them. Impregnating the maid. Yes. Wife sleeping with the driver. She got him on Malana. Personal assistant to the husband sleeping with the wife. Yes. The husband sleeping with his daughter. The son sleeping with his stepmother. And all sort of in inf infidelity. These are sexual perversions in homes. Look at that story there. Very sad story. But it's a true life story. A couple was looking for the fruit of the womb. And they were also looking for money. <laughs> the husband was jobless while the wife was working with a boss in an office. Then the boss started sleeping with the wife. 
But unknown to the unknown. Okay, let me read it. While the husband started sleeping with the younger sister of the wife at home. You know what, how that happened? The boss was sleeping with the wife. He made the wife his PA. So many times they would travel out of town. And while they are lodging in the hotel, they will be sleeping with the PA. Now when the husband was complaining that I'm lonely, I'm lonely, I'm lonely. The wife said, I can't leave this job now. Because this is the job that is feeding us. I'll know what to do. She went home and brought her junior sister to be keeping the husband come, at least to be cooking home for the husband when she is not around. But you know, as, as they say, what goes around comes around and stays around. Why the boss was sleeping with her, the husband also was sleeping with the junior sister. Unknown to her, she contacted HIV from the boss. And she infected the husband. The husband infected the sister. As I'm speaking to you today, the boss is dead, the wife is dead, the husband is dead, the sister is dead. The only saving grace was that the junior sister was pregnant for the husband. And she gave birth to a baby before she died. Amazingly, that baby did not have HIV. So in that family, only that baby is alive. Let's make sure we maintain healthy sexuality in our home. Let's wrap it up. There is no marriage and home that sex will not take place. It's one of the cardinal things, I want you to underline that, cardinal thing that must happen in every marriage and home. However, we must make sure it is done in biblical, godly, and morally upright ways. And may God give you the grace. And let me say this to you. Please look up at me. May the Lord bless you. Because you see, when you are living in one room, you are living in room and parlor, you are sexually polluting that house. Sincerely speaking. Because no matter how holy you are, as long as husband and wife, you are sleeping in the same bed, you must do this thing. And you know most of the time, when, uh, when the husband says, oh yeah now, the wife will say, your children are here, they have not slept. You say, they have slept, they have not slept, they have slept. They have slept. In your love, you want? And when you start the show, hey, hey, ha, who, hey, ha, your children will wake up. I had a sad story to tell about that. I can tell you many, but I will just tell you one. There was this young girl, by her 17th birthday, she had five kids for three husbands. 17th birthday in Lagos, yeah. Now listen to me very well. For you to know the evil of one room and room and parlor. Somebody, I know his name. He was the one that rescued that girl. Now he interviewed the girl. And look at what the girl says. How did you come about three husbands, five children, on your 17th birthday? He said, it's my father and my mother. How? He said, my father, ah! He says, Todd, by the time he's doing it with my mother, my mother will be crying, and my father will not leave. And we children that were sleeping on the floor will wake up. He said, when she wake up, her system is on fire. And so all the, she started going out at the age of 11. And that she's looking for a man that can do to her what his father, her father do to her mother. He said, of all those three men, he has not seen any. And that she will keep searching until she gets one. Unknown to the father and the mother. When your children are sleeping in the floor, or they are sleeping in the next room, and you are making noise, you want the real? Oh, Mary Wopa, yeah! And me, me, They are shouting Holy Ghost. And the husband is saying, your children will hear. He says, no, let them hear. You are sending the wrong signal. I hope I'm talking to somebody. Very important. Let's we, the way we handle our sexuality is very important. Or else we pollute our home. I remember a couple. They were even shameless. They were having it together in the afternoon. And they didn't close the door. 
their son just enter and met them stark naked. And the mother will say, Oh, Pada, this is what we do to burn you. And the other one will say, Oh, now for you. I will that they die right here, say, Dan, say, I won't worry. Let's read our solution. Couples must be district. Sex must only happen in private and in an environment of what? Privacy. One room or a room and parlor apartment with children on the floor is what? It's unhealthy. It breeds immoralities in children. Separate rooms must be provided for boys and girls from age seven upwards. Because if you give them the same room, they'll be doing it to Proper sex education must be given to children by both parents. Any sexual deficiency must be referred to qualified medical personnel. Take your sexual challenges to your godly and experienced mentor. If you have any of those I've shared with you, repent of any sexual perversion and rid your house of immoral materials. Go and burn all those VHS and all those things. And you know some people even do evil to the extent that they record themselves having sex and they kept it in their phone. You know, they did it to one uh, home video girl where somebody was having sex with her and she was stuck naked. She recorded it on her phone and some people stole the phone. And when they browsed through it, they saw it and they blackmailed her to bring them millions. When she didn't pay, they sold it to journalists and those one printed. It destroyed her career. In these days of phones, people can record you. So you must be very, very wise. Stand up on your feet. Lord, every spirit of lust, remove it from me. You know, even if you are married, if you have spirit of lust, your husband or your wife will never satisfy you. Every spirit of lust. I renounce in my life.